how are we meant to live this present life that we have? And what's the meaning of this life? Why are we even here? Those are the questions that we're dealing with on this program each day. And we've got to the point where we have established why we're here. And if you've been with us the past eight or nine months, you know that after examining the intellectual reasons for believing that there is a personal intellectual being behind the universe who is responsible for its creation, and examining the documentary evidence that his son actually did live in the first century of our era, and that he has communicated to us his own father, the Creator's thoughts about why we're here, we've reached the point where we're beginning to talk about how we are meant to live this present life, and particularly how our personalities are meant to operate. If you're like me, and like a lot of us here in this earth at the present time, many of us are confused about how the various parts of our personality are meant to operate and what responsibilities different ones are meant to have. Uh, that is obvious from the chaos that many of us have got into through not only things like alcohol, but also through cocaine and through heroin and through all kinds of other chemical drugs uh, that we use to try to bring peace into our present life or some kind of appropriate elation. It's obvious that we have great confusion in our minds about how our personalities are meant to operate or how we really should live this life. And so we have been discussing it from the point of view of the one who made the life. After all, the best person to tell you how a Hoover vacuum cleaner works is the Hoover people that make the vacuum cleaner. It's the same with uh, an automobile. The best person to tell us how a Ford car should operate is Ford, the person that makes it. And so it's reasonable that the best person to tell us how our personality was meant to operate is, of course, our maker, the one who made it, the one who created it. And uh, if we can't speak to him directly, at least to s listen to his son. And uh, it's his son, the man we know as Jesus of Nazareth, that has outlined in a fair degree of detail in his own words and in the words of his followers how our personalities are meant to operate. And he has pointed out that we exist on three different levels. Uh, obviously, the physical level is the most obvious to us. It's the body. Through the five senses uh, that we have physically, we are able to perceive the world around us of things and of circumstances and people. Then within that body, uh, which it wears like a kind of overcoat, you might uh, think of it as being inside, like a suit of clothes underneath the overcoat, is our soul, the psychological part of us. And that part of us is conscious not so much of the world, except as it perceives it through our body and through the five senses, but it's most conscious of itself. That's the self-conscious part of us. With our mind, we're able to look in and see what we're thinking. We're able to look at our feelings and see what we're feeling. And then inside that soul part or that psychological part is our spirits. And that's the real you. That's the very essence of you. It's what you are when you're alone. That's what your spirit is. Your spirit is the real you. It's also the part of you that is able to communicate with the maker of the world. It's in your spirit where you have a relationship with your creator. And of course, many of us think, no, we have that relationship through our body, and so if we can pump the right heroin into our body, we'll come into some kind of wild spiritual experience, which will be very satisfying, and we find it isn't necessarily so, and it doesn't work. And uh, all you're left, in, uh, left with after a while is kind of a wet soap bubble in your hand that has burst. It's the same with our souls. Some of us think, oh, well, we can think our way through to our maker or we can think our way through to some kind of wonderful religious experience which will at last give us satisfaction. Well, of course, this, the mind itself is finite. 
and can only examine the information that is presented to it. And if that's inf uh, finite information, that's as far as it can go. It's the same with the feelings, the emotions. The emotions are so influenced by the body, as we discovered over the past few days, that if you pump the heroin into the body, it kind of brings a passivity to the soul or to the emotions and appears to give you some sense of quiet, but it doesn't last any longer than the effects of the chemi chemicals last in your body. And so the emotions are certainly not the place uh, uh, to perceive the maker of the world. It is in your spirit, actually, that you perceive him and you understand him. And uh, the spirit is the place uh, or the part of you that is able to communicate with God. And you've probably had some experience of that in your own life. You've been uh, at a lake side and you've sat there quiet after everybody else had gone uh, to explore some caves or go canoeing or sailing. And you've sat there and you've looked on the glassy, mirror-like surface of the water. And of course, that has brought great peace through your eyes and even your ears to your emotions. And you sense a great deal of emotional peace. But then there comes a time when you have felt that you went beyond that or you've sensed that you've gone beyond that and you've received something more than kind of emotional communication from the mirror-like surface of the water and the quiet of the lake setting and you've sensed that there was something within you uh, trying to communicate to you in some way. And often uh, many of us have sensed intuitively deep down, deeper than our body, deeper than our emotions, deeper than our intellects, deeper than our wills, we've sensed that there was some, well, we call it a voice, but we don't want to be thought too mystical or bonkers. And so we say, no, we've sensed something inside. We just, and then we express it, we just think we should do this. We think we should set out and get this degree or train for this job or we think we should go and marry this person or we think we should do this thing or that thing. And really it has come from a great quietness inside us, deeper than we can even define. Uh, there seems to have been a, an intuitive sense that we should do something or be something. Now, and that is our spirits. And it's in your spirit that you communicate with the maker of the world. It's usually when everything else has been uh, either battered into submission or everything else is in a state of balance or peace. And so many of us have found that that same kind of sense within has come at a time of great personal loss where suddenly the bottom of our world seems to have dropped out. And we've momentarily turned from the outside world around us and turned even from our own thoughts and feelings, and we seem to have touched a deeper part of our beings than we have ever touched before. Coleridge said that, uh, the old uh, English poet uh, uh, Coleridge said that about the Bible. He said, the Bible finds me at a deeper depth of my being than any other book. Now, that's what many of us have found. We've found that at certain moments in our lives, we have touched a deeper depth of our being than ever before. And it carries its own seal of uh, uh, warranty, uh, its own seal of authenticity within it. It's interesting. If you've come to that point, you've sensed this is reality. This is really reality. And you've had no doubt of it. You've just known that is true. That is right. Now that's your spirit. And the reason we have so rarely had those moments is because we do not listen to our spirits. We have not exercised our spirits. Our personalities have almost squashed our spirits to death. And if you say, well, why have they done that? because they operate almost completely on the physical level. Most of us are just little animals. We operate on the level of our physical bodies. 
even those of us who spend a great deal of our time maybe in the uh, city uh, trying to work out where, how to invest our money and think of ourselves as being very cerebral. Even we are governed most of the time by uh, how we can get a nicer car or whether we can buy that uh, expensive French or German suit or whether we can have a good dinner with good wine this Saturday. And so we operate, most of us, on the level of our bodies. Let's talk a little more tomorrow about how we were meant to operate in these personalities of